Yes, so we are now at Token 2049 in Singapore and with you Anna Tutova, co-founder of Coins Telegram and our guest uh, Ryan Zarek, who is co-founder and CTO of uh, Layer Zero. It's a unicorn company uh, where uh, A16Z, Sequoia Capital, FTX Ventures, Coinbase, PayPal and many other big funds invested and uh, they are building and uh, trusted omni-chain protocol which allows uh, dApps uh, to uh, build uh, multi-chain. Great to have you here, right? Yeah, thanks for having me. So can you tell us about your background and how did you get into the crypto space? Yeah, sure. Uh, so actually, um, my three co-founders, Brian, Caleb, and I, uh, were college roommates. Uh, mm -hmm. And we started our first company at a school together and been building uh, and sold that company. And then have been building uh, products and companies together for the past 16 years. Uh, before. Uh, you know, layer zero and stuff like that. We were doing AI. We had done uh, research with Noam Brown and Facebook AI research that we had published uh, that was uh, cutting edge AI research that had like 5,000x performance uh, over the industry best. That was done by like Google, mm -hmm. DeepMind, and Facebook at the time. Uh, we then moved into um, getting more into crypto and wanting to build product there. Uh, we had played around with the, uh, arbitra early, early arbitrage oppor opportunities that were on chain. Uh, and then uh, what we had saw with crypto was basically uh, around the time that BNB or BSC, which is now BNB chain, had just come out. Uh, it was really a viable option to, to uh, kind of go up against Ethereum. There's a lot of uh, traction there, and we thought it would be really awesome to, have a, to make a multi-chain application. So we thought that that's what we're going to try to do. So I started evaluating all the bridges and messaging, uh, or if there was any messaging layers, but there wasn't at the time. So it was just bridges out there, and realized. Um, they're all deeply flawed. Uh, they all based on this concept of having a, multi, a middle chain in the middle that had some consensus that was staked some, in some way, uh, and that if it was staking, you know, you, you stake with say a couple hundred million, uh, but as it gets more popular, it gets more, they have to have more money staked, right? So it becomes very capital inefficient. So if you're securing billions, you also need billions staked. And if you don't have that, uh, it's just a honeypot, right? In the same way that you would expect uh, Ethereum to be attacked in a, if, if, there, if it was cost effective for a 51% attack, but it's not, uh, it will become very cost effective for middle chains over time as they gain popularity uh, to be attacked because they're going to be securing uh, way more than they're bonding. Uh, so it was something we never wanted to build on. Uh, and one of the other concepts we, we liked, but was really expensive, was kind of like Cosmos IBC style, mm -hmm. uh, where you're running full on chain like clients. Uh, and then validating with transaction proofs. Um, but the problem with that is it would cost 50 to $100 million per day per pairwise chain mm -hmm. attached to Ethereum. So it really only worked with the Tendermint chain at the time, Tendermint ecosystem um, due to cost constraints. And so that's when we came up with layer zero, which uh, takes uh, an approach of running what we call an ultralight node or an ultralight client, where moving block headers on demand and then validating them on the destination chain. Uh, so that's kind of how we got uh, this, the process of getting to what we have uh, layer zero, uh, creating that messaging layer. Uh, and then we built Stargate on top of that, which uh, is a native asset bridge uh, that is fully composable. Uh, and things like Sushi X swap, that Sushi swap released, uh, where you can go any asset to any asset on any chain, and a, and a single click is enabled by Stargate and this um, you know, composable uh, native asset bridge. So you put security on the first place? Security is our number one concern. We have uh, we spend uh, more money than anybody in the space on, on audits. So we have uh, we have three and a half million dollars this year alone uh, on audits, twenty five audits and counting. Uh, still getting audits on things that are out there, right? So it's not just we release. We want we find you know as many white hat. Uh, uh, auditors that are out there that can can try to attack it and break it even mm -hmm. after the fact uh, we have the largest bug bounty in all of crypto uh, for both layer zero and stargate both at 15 million dollars mm -hmm. I mean 30 million dollars total that we have in bug bounties out there um, and then we're also getting layer zero and stargate uh, formally verified uh, mm -hmm. and, and security is like our highest priority in, in that sense mm -hmm. um, and and it's kind of like the, the base design of layer zero is making sure it's a true protocol and that it's not dependent on me or layer zero labs mm -hmm. in any way to secure it. Um, and, and in fact, uh, I coded it in that way and designed it in that way that uh, it's, un it's in, in a way that if I became evil and I wanted to attack layer zero so if I'm may, I cannot do that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's nothing I can do or, the, uh, or layer zero labs can do to affect applications building on top of us uh, because it is a true uh, you know, decentralized and permissionless protocol. Mm -hmm. um, and what comes with that is like that means that it's not upgradable, and so we can't, you know, push updates, upgrades that could potentially break 
uh, break or uh, put your other, other applications building on top of us at risk. And that's what you see with a lot of these bridge hacks. Like a lot of these bridge problems that happened, like recently the Nomad one, they upgraded their smart contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't initialize something and people were able to forge messages, right? Uh, same thing with uh, worm, Wormhole's last bug bounty, same thing. They upgraded something, they didn't initialize, and they were lucky that a, a, a white hat was able to, to uh, report a bug bounty and save them, and they instead paid, instead of paying another $400 million hack loss, they paid $10 million in bug bounty, which was, which was great, um, but that's just the fundamental flaw of, of, of not thinking security first and being upgradable, right? There's a pro and con to everything. You don't get being, having a smart contract be upgradable doesn't come, as it come free, right? There's a cost there, and the cost is security. Uh, and, and risk. Uh, and so Layer Zero uh, believes in not having that. And so what we have is a system of, 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 of libraries that applications can opt into. And so user applications building on Layer Zero uh, select uh, all the hyperparameters for security, including the number of block confirmations they can wait, uh, their Oracle and Relayer pairing, where they can select a chain link, uh, you know, FTX, mm -hmm. um, you know, block daemon in, uh, in future. Uh, layer zero labs, all these different variety of uh, off-chain infrastructure to act as the Oracle and Relayer pairing. And they also select their library, verification library. So layer zero has, like I said, mentioned earlier, this thing called an ultra light node, which does this on-chain verification. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the hubris to believe that this is going to be the best thing in the future forever, right? I, it could be, but there could be other future uh, technologies that can do verification uh, maybe cheaper or more, uh, you know, uh, with a more, more have more security in mind in, in, in that sense, uh, or and or just different varieties of, of um, proofing mechanisms that people might prefer, uh, like zk technology in the future mm -hmm. and, uh, and Z, uh, or optimistic, right? Um, Do you support those well zk chains, zk evams? Yes, we will. Of course. So layer zero will go anywhere that has smart contract enabled chains. Uh, mm -hmm. And so our upgrade libraries basically mean that uh, our validation libraries is that you can opt in to choose them. And so applications like uh, big blue chip applications that are building on top of layer zero can, can select what's been there for the longest and, and mm -hmm. has stood the test of time. And if layer zero wants to put a ZK library out or a ZK proofing library out in the future, uh, those applications can say, you know what, I'm going to stick with the ultra light node until this ZK uh, library has stood the test of time. And it's not a universal upgrade that everybody is forced mm -hmm. into. Uh, and, and that is what we think uh, belongs uh, in, in a, in a cross-chain messaging protocol. So how many chains do you support currently? Currently, we're on uh, nine mainnets and a bunch of uh, avalanche uh, subnets and, and uh, test nets for other subnets mm -hmm. and polygon supernets as well. Uh, we're going to be live on uh, Aptos and Sui day one for the mm -hmm. for our launches, uh, as well as uh, following up with uh, Solana and somewhere in between them. We had finished the Solana uh, smart contracts and it's in a private beta right now. And it's mm -hmm. just a matter of getting the off-chain infrastructure in place to support that. Um, security is, like I said, our number one priority. Um, yeah. And which year did you start building Laser? We started in uh, tw uh, spring of 2021. Mm -hmm. So basically when <laughs> there was already hype of all these different chains, and uh, where do you see the most activity on which chains? Um, it's it's a variety. It, there's usually when you're building on layer zero. Uh, so that's what we see. It's like who we see who's building on layer zero. Right? So we have seven thousand contracts on testnet, mm -hmm. uh, like eighteen hundred on mainnet, and constantly growing uh, every month at, a, at the same rate. Um, and so, uh, what happens a lot of the times is these applications, because they're going on the chain. Uh, mm -hmm. is that they are going to be deploying them on everything, right? Mm -hmm. Because then they can have that, that flexibility, that variety, where they can, uh, you know, have access to users uh, everywhere, right? Because usually mm -hmm. there's, someone's an Ethereum user, they, they, that's their kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, ecosystem tribe where, where all their, act, where all their, uh, their funds are. And, and then you still, if, you, if you're launching your application mm -hmm. on Arbitrum, Optimism, Polygon, um, you know, Avalanche, things like that, uh, you're accessing those users and that could be part of your community. And so uh, we find that most applications uh, are being launched, are, are planned to be launched everywhere that we support and grow even off of EVM. Uh, seeing a lot of demand and uh, for Aptos and Sui, which is um, the Libra fork from Facebook that uses the move language, uh, a lot of hype there uh, and, and a lot of the applications that are looking to build on it. So uh, we, that's how we decide where we build next is where the developers want. Uh, so it's about developer feedback. What, what are people looking for? Uh, and that's where we, we, we launch an endpoint. Uh, but plan is to hit, and layer zero will uh, be connecting all blockchains everywhere that are smart contract enabled. 
And what type of applications do you see uh, using the most uh, Layer Zero? Are this like NFT, gaming, or DeFi? So we thought when we first launched Layer Zero, it was going to be mostly DeFi. But mm -hmm. in fact, since the launch, uh, it's been about 50% inbound has been uh, gaming and NFTs. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, a really interesting concept or interesting thing that these NF gaming and NFT projects are coming out with is that they have a problem where even if they want to launch, they want a fast user experience, if they launch on a layer one, um, there's this risk, there's a, a fear that a layer one will get overburdened over mm -hmm. time uh, and that it'll de degrade the quality of their game. Or an NFT drop like you'll see on Solana mm -hmm. that'll like, bring Solana to its knees uh, and that affects those games' gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they want to run their own chain. Uh, but then what comes with running their own chain is they have these NFTs uh, that they have to deploy uh, and then put a marketplace on there and get liquidity on there. Things that that's not their core competency. Like these are game, these gaming chains are good at building games. That's mm -hmm. something fun uh, for, for their users and like they're not DeFi builders. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, through demand, created this standard called uh, the Omnichain NFT standard or ONFT uh, that basically defines how, you do, how to make an NFT exist on all chains mm -hmm. uh, and via layer zero messaging transfer the NFT between chains. And so that enables uh, these gaming chains to be able to move their NFTs uh, to say Ethereum and uh, tap into that liquidity on OpenSea mm -hmm. and then also access those users there and say Solana uh, and, and bring them back to the gaming chain to play and they don't have to worry about making this marketplace anymore or bringing in liquidity or wrapped assets, right? They just have their game and then their NFTs that can move. Uh, which uh, is that's what a lot of like things that are coming out on Avalanche subnets mm -hmm. and Polygon supernets is, is this concept of uh, you know application owned chains mm -hmm. and same thing with DeFi we're seeing a lot of DeFi applications go kind of go this route and then be able to move assets between their chains mm -hmm. uh, but then they have full control of their own uh, kind of security of running their own, own uh, you know app, app specific chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And as well, what, uh, what is the most exciting for you in uh, crypto space? Uh, so we're working on a lot of cool, uh, I guess we want to add utilities for, mm -hmm. for, for layer zero, for applications building on top of layer zero um, and making it easier. So recently we just launched layer zero scan, um, which is a, allows, uh, I guess, all of the applications to be able to track in real time where their transactions are. So it kind of like takes away this like black box or them having to like find it through different scans. It kind of puts it all together and gives them this one unified interface with APIs. Uh, and then adding more tooling or, uh, in the space like a cross-chain multi-sig that we're looking mm -hmm. to build uh, and, and then having wallet integrations as well uh, and working with wallets that are out there um, to be able to really uh, move towards the step of an omni-chain mm -hmm. experience because right now uh, it's pretty rough to switch between chains even in MetaMask or whatever, whatever is out there uh, and being able to have uh, omni-chain first within the wallet and automatically switch like when I'm on a place that mm -hmm. on that web browser uh, and I select Avalanche I don't want to have to go in MetaMask and switch Avalanche mm -hmm. right it, it's just a it's a process and so you know having them um, start building those things in and building in bridge integration uh, of Stargate where they can wrap Stargate and, and add uh, any to any assets, things mm -hmm. like that, uh, we're super excited about. And how do you generally see the current situation on the market? Like <laughs> we are pretty in bearish market. Do you see it's, any bull market inside? And uh, like what developments so I don't, I don't, do you see? I, I think you know, bear markets are, are a great time to build. This is when all the technology for the next built bull market is going to come out. And so uh, as from a developer standpoint, from like, you know, I, I built layer zero and I'm, I'm a developer at heart. I want, I, I embrace the, the bear market mm -hmm. because it's a time where we can actually make some more innovations and mm -hmm. really get things out there uh, so that we're ready for the next bull market and, and able to provide a better uh, omni-chain experience for all developers. Um, so in terms of what I've, I don't, I don't, I don't have uh, real thoughts on what's going to happen in the near future, uh, but crypto is here to stay. And I think uh, it's just, uh, and it's going to be a multi-chain or omni-chain experience. Uh, not one chain is going to win them all. Uh, and we're going to start seeing uh, you know, a variety of applications mm -hmm. that take advantage of the pros, the strengths of, say, a Solana of a fast, of a mm -hmm. fast blockchain and the security of Ethereum restoring the assets there and then uh, the cheap storage of an Arweave or an IPFS and making this one unified application that a user doesn't realize they're using these three blockchains or, mm -hmm. or a combination of blockchains and, and that, you know, the application doesn't actually live on one of them. It, mm -hmm. it combined with all of them is what makes that application work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And do you plan to launch a token for Layer Zero in the future? Um, 
no plans, to, uh, we don't really think about tokens right now. What we're really mm -hmm. focused on uh, and putting all of our effort in is to helping up uh, builders build on top of mm -hmm. Layer Zero. Uh, so one of the things we thought about was, do we do an ecosystem fund or how do we do this? And we said, no, ecosystem fund kind of just makes it really mercenary. People are coming in to collect, uh, to make money to, be, to build on top mm -hmm. of Layer Zero. But Layer Zero is a, is a protocol that adds value to applications mm -hmm. that are being built on us. And so what we instead do is put, spend a lot of time uh, and, and put a lot of resources into integration engineering, where we have engineers really white glove help uh, service mm -hmm. these applications and show and, and, and like you know review the code. We do in free audits for these applications. We audit it themselves. We introduce them to auditors. We go. I personally go over architecture designs mm -hmm. and uh, and give uh, you know pros and cons of what they're doing and, and, and give tips and ideas uh, on things we've seen and approaches and 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 really try to make sure that what they're launching uh, is a secure and well-built application. Because um, it's good for, the, for crypto, it's good for the ecosystem. Uh, and I think, you know, anybody who's built on layer zero, you can just ask them, right? It, it, is, an, it is a night and day experience from anything else. Uh, and and that's, that's what we pride ourselves in. And do you invest personally in any altcoins? Um, I, I used to invest, uh, but I spend all of my time building at this time point. So uh, I've kind of put that aside uh, in terms of dealing with day-to-day -day trading mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just focus solely on, uh, on building Layer Zero. Yeah, great to see such a dedicated <laughs> team. And as well, can you share some upcoming plans for the development of Layer Zero? Yeah, sure. Um, so like I mentioned, we're going to Aptos and Sui day one for their launch of their, of, mm -hmm. of their blockchains, uh, Solana. And then after that, you know, the roadmap looks like maybe a Cosmos or, or a Near, and then Flow around mm -hmm. there and figuring out like which one has the most demand. Where are people want uh, a layer zero endpoint to connect to everything else? Mm -hmm. uh, we want to hit them all. It's just like these bandwidth is a concern, right? Layer zero, um, everything we do, we want it to be the highest quality mm -hmm. and um, we don't cut corners. So we spend a lot of time on security and design mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we like to say we know the blockchain before we start, by the time we're building and done building an endpoint. Uh, second best to the creators, right? Because mm -hmm. we know it so well and intimately because we're trying to figure out ways to exploit anything we do. We're trying to uh, attack it. We get everything we put out has like three or four audits before it even goes to mainnet or mm -hmm. even gets considered to be on mainnet, right? Uh, it's just a different level of standard that we are trying to set the example for what all of crypto should be doing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these hacks that happen with, um, you know, these different uh, bridges and blockchain applications uh, you know, you find out after the fact that they had an audit, one audit, and that audit's outdated, uh, and no one bothered to look because they said, oh, they had an audit by somebody. But it was like six months ago, and they've been updating code since then. Uh, and it's, ir it's an irresponsible thing to do, especially when you're dealing with other people's money. Uh, and so we really want to set the standard of like, and what all of, uh, you know, crypto should be doing when we're dealing with uh, things like, like, like assets and, and uh, people's money, you know? Yeah, that's great that you care so much about security and wish you good luck uh, in your development. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for the interview. Yeah, of course.